Joining us now in Studio B, President Coach Steve Cleveland, former BYU basketball coach, uh, now a uh, weekly part of our show as we're in the middle of basketball season. Coach, nice to have you back. President ha Coach Cleveland. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to both of you. Good to be here. BYU is a seven and a half point favorite, as Jaron pointed out in the opening segment. Ken Pomeroy gives the Cougars a 68% chance to win against a team that has a guy like Alec Peters, who's averaging 25 and 9. I mean, this is a this is a good Valpo team. What do you think about the the line and the percent chance that's given to BYU to win tonight? I think that's based upon a couple of things. One, BYU's improved ability to defend, uh, the fact that it's an inside-out game and that they're pounding that thing inside and scoring in the game that they had on Monday night, they scored 60-plus points inside, uh, which is incredible. So <laughs> those are things that I think travel well, and, uh, and I think that's why they're the favorite. They've had some losses to graduation, as BYU has as well. But I just like the maturity of this team and the sense and purpose that they're playing with. When you're undefeated, everything's great, and then you look for something that you can do better, right? That's the three-point shooting for BYU right now. But you don't see it as – as much of a concern maybe as, as me. Why is that? You know, I think sometimes you can fall in love with that shot, and then, and then all of a sudden that becomes the first option rather than the second option. And I think that the fact that they're struggling a little bit, we know they have good shooters, but if you fall in love with that shot early and you take that on the road, and you're, you can't win on the road. And you get, that's where you get upset when you should win. I think inside out is where it happens. I, I feel like Eric Mika and... Yoli Childs and all of them inside who have such a, a force inside, it opens things up for the threes. And that's, that's not the way that BYU has normally played. It's, it's off the dribble. You know, you think about the great three-point shooters here. Everything's off the dribble. Here we see Mika defending, and that's another thing that we haven't had is to be able to defend in the post. Steve Cleveland with us on BYU Sports Nation, BYU and Valpo tonight, midnight Eastern time on ESPN2. How would you improve three-point shooting, Coach? What, what would you recommend for these guys? Is it, is it the uh, shot selection, don't do it off the dribble, maybe uh, demand a double and get it back? What, what would you recommend for these guys? I would always emphasize one more pass. Feet squared, ready to shoot it, rather than taking threes off the dribble. <clears throat> Every player out there is different. Nick Emery may be a better three-point shooter off the dribble than maybe T.J. Hawes. And each, the coaching staff knows. I, I think you don't talk about it a lot, to be honest with you. You just reps, reps, mm -hmm. reps. You encourage them. When they're open and they take good shots, they need to know that, that was a great shot. Don't worry about it. Take that same shot the next time you have it. Now, let's not forget about time and score. Now, if it's two minutes to go, you know, you're going to, as a coach, you're going to say, hey, listen, right now let's go inside and take the three on the way back out, feet squared. So time and score is important. But confidence is everything in this game. And I think that's why BYU right now is playing with so much confidence is that they know that they're defending better and they know that everything starts inside. They've got control of the game. It's kind of how Valpo plays as well. Mm. Have you seen anything in the two exhibitions and now the four regular season games that BYU basketball have played that has surprised you? That, they, that everybody is committed inside to getting the ball inside. A, a team that has been perimeter-oriented for the last six, seven, eight years. And they've bought into that, and that's, a, that's due to the coaching staff, and obviously they're talking about that. But I think they're seeing the rewards of that. I think the other thing that surprised me is that LJ Rose would rebound the ball like he has from the point guard position. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's a triple-double threat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ten in the first when, you, when you get ten rebounds from your point guard position, it tells you this. Number one, he's going to the glass. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most teams will send their two guard back for transition defense, and then the point guard will pick up the ball. That's that's how you defend in transition. He's going to get in the rebound first, <laughs> and if they happen to get it, he's there. So I think that's one of the things that surprised me. You know, and I, we knew that coming in that he was a very cerebral player. He was a leadership guy, good in the locker room, but I didn't see that part of his game. Yeah, absolutely, and he's been – we've talked about this, but we've seen it play out a little more uh, since we last talked to you with Saturday and Monday's game. The, he's the perfect injection of uh, leadership and unselfishness because there are plenty of shooters, but for him to be on this team, it, it's been a huge boost for the Cougars, so much that I look at the rest of the non-conference schedule and I go, there's not a game BYU shouldn't, shouldn't – they should win every game the rest of the way. I, I have to, one thought on that. I think, too, with the slow progression of Elijah, his injury, 
and trying to get confidence in himself and what he's doing, having LJ here has, has been a big help. Oh, and I man. agree with you. On paper, you look at that, and if they – they're going to have a chance to win every game. You know, you're right. Sometimes you get on a road and things just don't go well, or somebody gets in usually hot and starts making threes like Valpo did last year in the NIT. I think – that this team has the ability to have great success in the preseason. I don't think we're going to see the hiccups on the road with teams that they have came in and, you know, they had a cold night shooting and all of a sudden it impacted the game. Those kinds of games are not going to impact wins and losses this year for BYU. BYU has been so impressive, uh, not just in the paint, but when they get physical and they get fouled, they're making free throws. And uh, that uh, will help a coach sleep easy because you're going to win a lot of games <laughs> if you make free throws. Well, especially when your bigs are making free throws. Yes. And, and you know, it, it's, it's one thing for your, your good shooting guards to make free throws. But when you're pounding that thing inside as much as they are and they are getting fouled and they're such aggressive rebounders, they're going to get fouled. Um, you just take it and you're happy for it and you don't talk about it. <laughs> just, keep, <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing uh, because – they're going to get the most touches early on. And, uh, and I, I, I know it with Nick and TJ, I've watched them practice and play a little bit in games to know that they can take over a game. And don't think for a moment that that's not going to happen. Regardless of what we're doing inside out, they're both capable of doing that. This matchup with Valpo is interesting. I, I called it in, uh, the seventh best game on BYU's schedule. I think it's a, a good game, a resume-building kind of game. What do you think of uh, what this game could do for BYU in March maybe? I think when you look at Coastal Carolina, Valpo, Princeton, those are all three teams that are projected to possibly win their conferences. When you, win, when you beat someone, whether it's on a neutral floor or it doesn't matter, that is a, that's going to help their resume. And I think that when, that's what I looked at. First of all, I thought, hey, Coastal Carolina, I know they got blown out, but they are a pretty good team. And in their league, they have a chance to win that league. Princeton, the same thing. Same thing in the Horizon League with, uh, with Valpo. So those are, uh, you know, opportunities for them to, to go up and not only in the rankings but in all the RPI. Was Valparaiso in your mission boundaries as a mission? No, team? you know what? It was uh, just northwest in, in around Geary. I was hoping it would be, and it wasn't. But uh, we had a lot of Valpo fans, actually, <laughs> because they had been so successful. Then Butler, you a Butler fan or a Valpo fan, and then you had IU and Purdue. You had a lot of good basketball there. That is good hoops, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Hoops. You went to the perfect mission for you, man. That was inspired. <laughs> I knew it before. I know it more now. Coach, when BYU gets on the road, and this is their first trip away from the Marriott Center, common logic would suggest that we're not going to shoot the ball as well, and uh, we might have some struggles, and there's going to be a learning curve away from the comforts of your own home gym. Didn't see that a ton with a 30-point win uh, against a St. Louis team that's not very good this year, but what do, you, what do you expect from BYU once they really get out on the road consistently uh, with this type of team? Are, are you concerned? Are you expecting a drop-off at some point? You know what? I, I think that depending on who the opponent is, there are more challenges. But I think what happens right now is you instill confidence in your players. First of all, you need to have routines. And uh, I, I think there are times to have fun on the road at team-building opportunities. But they, they know what they're going to do. I think the more confident you are on, hey, you know what? This is where we're going to sleep. This is when we're going to eat. This is when we have our shoot around. This is what we do. That culture is established with young players. They, that takes some of the nerves away. And then just great preparation. And I can tell you, this coaching staff has an attention to detail. And so there's going to be great preparation. I look at these games, and this is not really a true road game, okay? They don't play one of those until conference play, where they're going to actually play in an opponent's gym. So there will be a bit of an adjustment there. But I think what's happening right now is that just all the little things they do that actually leads up to the game. Coaches told me that they're playing with a different Nike ball. They're trying out a new ball. And, it, and it, it's, I don't know if it's slippery or it just feels differently. But those are important things. I can remember going to Auburn, Cliff Ellis playing there one time and, and having our shoot around and then coming to the game and having completely different balls. Oh, oh really? <laughs> oh, no. yes. ah, nice, Cliff. Now, I, I'm not saying that. I'm suggesting that might happen in the WCC. <laughs> but you, ne you need to be prepared for those things. But I think the more confident they are, and I think right now the reason they're playing with so much confidence is because they're, you know, hanging their hat on garden people, rebounding, getting inside, shooting free throws. That's a formula for winning on the road. This is a championship ball and something that maybe BYU hasn't played as much. It's been more 
volume offense, good enough defense. So this is exciting, an exciting time. For I don't think confidence will ever be an issue with this team. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I think that's true. But sometimes you can get false confidence. But especially for younger players like Yoli, Giles, Elijah, who hasn't played in a year. LJ is confident. He, he's a veteran and the others. But there are some that are going to come in the ground. I look at uh, Davin Quinn. We watched him in practice, and he was really good in practice. And then the lights came on, and he struggled a little bit. But him coming in that game right there, they are going to need that young man to guard somebody that's 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, when TJ or Nick or others are in tr foul trouble. He can come in and give help. So that game for, for him is a confidence builder. And I'm not talking about the confidence of the entire team, but if there's two or three you can bring along, you're going to make them better down the road. Cleves Land in Studio B. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for the time. You bet. Great Happy to be with you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving yeah. to both of you.